Today is my 29th birthday, and there is no other way that I would like to spend my birthday than keeping you all updated with Minecraft. So welcome back. My name is Echo. Hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. We are back on Minecraft Pocket Edition, the Bedrock version for a brand new beta and preview. This is the beta and preview version 1.19.20.20. Great news! That means that we can be expecting the version 1.19.10 very, very soon. Here is the confirmation from Jay Wells. He is the Minecraft community manager. He said, new Minecraft preview slash beta incoming. Lots of fixes and tweaks in this week's update. Check out the change log. If you want the change log, it is down below. Just keeping you all updated with the latest Minecraft news, the official Minecraft Twitter account posted this, saying in a recent article, we mentioned that we planned to release 1.19.1 for Minecraft Java on June 28th. We still have some work to do, and so the release will not be out just yet. Thanks for your patience. So the article they are talking about is this one. They released an article and everyone was like, great news, 1.19.1 is releasing. And 1.19.10 for Bedrock version. They've decided to delay it. More than likely because of this new banning and reporting system that will be introduced in that version. So it's been delayed. Maybe it'll be next week. Also, Bedrock players, while I have your attention, head over to the marketplace. Because at the top, they are giving away free things. If you click on view gifts, there's going to be free things for you to claim. Day one was Marketplace Creator Tycoon and Star Pendant. Day two is Jigaba Productions Seeing Gold. Every single day, all the way up until July 17th, will be free content for you to claim. So make sure you claim them. Here is the first 1.19.20 changes. Let's get through all of them. The change log does start off with a please note. It says, please note that there will not be a preview slash beta release for the week of July 4th, 2022. That's next week. Features and bug fixes. Vanilla parity, we have a lot of those. Zombies now have a 10% chance to be able to break doors on hard difficulty. We got a bug report. Every zombie is able to break down doors. So it shouldn't be every single zombie. And that's now going to be the case on Bedrock Edition. It's only a 10% chance. They have removed wood from the names of mangrove, wood, planks, stairs, and slabs. So when you pick these up now, it just says mangrove planks, not mangrove wood planks. Or mangrove wood stairs. Or mangrove wood slabs so that's been changed and matched to java edition it says the wandering traders spawning now matches java edition and will no longer spawn in water lava or underground we've got a bug report wandering trader spawns in incorrect places it's been reported for a very long time they finally fixed it so let me go through these pictures here. You would have them spawning in caves, even at the negative heights. You would have them spawning in really weird places like this, which I'm guessing that looks like he's on water. It is. That's ruined his farm. And yeah, basically that's been fixed. End portal frame block is now named end portal frame instead of end portal. We got a bug report. End portal frame has the incorrect name. Again, a long time reported bug slash problem. It's now been fixed under the vanilla parity. We have a picture here. So on Java, end portal frame. On Birdrock, it's end portal. They're using forward slash give at s end underscore portal underscore frame. But I don't think this has been fixed. Let me show you. If we pick block this, it says end portal. If we go to the creator menu and type in end, it says end portal. But if we do forward slash give, we give ourselves an end, do underscore portal. It's end underscore portal underscore frame. So unless I'm misunderstanding this, because it says end portal frame is now 
named end portal frame instead of end portal, so I don't think it's been fixed completely. Unless I'm reading it wrong. Tadpoles flopping around while on land now closely matches Java Edition and fishes in speed. Tadpole flapping on land movement is too fast. Been reported in all the 1.19 versions. Now fixed under vanilla parity. Here is the bedrock footage. You can see how fast it is flopping around. Meanwhile, here is what it looks like on Java Edition. There's a lot more slow movement there. So if we just test this today, it just, I mean, it still feels like it's flopping around very similar. I, also, why is it so high in the sky? <laughs> there definitely needs to be a little bit more work with the bedrock mobs in general, to be honest. But yeah, apparently it matches Java Edition. Polar bears, no longer panic when attacked. Again, class has a vanilla parity, so when you hit it now, it doesn't run away. It's not scared of you. It's, I mean, it's annoyed that you're in creative and it's in survival, but yeah. That's been fixed. Piglins will now stop attacking if the player puts on gold armor. So finally, if you quick equip this, it's not going to be beating you up. So we're going to go forward slash game mode S. If we summon this, but then quickly put this on, not interested. If we quickly take it off, he's once again interested in you. We're just going to put a helmet on. Not interested. Just going to take it off. He's interested. Just going to quickly put this on. So you get the idea there. Obviously, it's changed, but that's the whole point. I've actually never seen one of these with a, uh, a crossbow. Looks pretty cool. Moving over to spectator mode. Still in experimental. Players can now place blocks where a spectator is hovering. So if we go to forward slash game mode spectator, right? And we're this little floating head. And I'm standing right here. Right? Right here. If my friend then wanted to go ahead and place a block where I'm standing, they can now do that. They couldn't previously. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, players now have their hands back when they are holding a map, when they have one item in offhand and one in the main hand. We've got a bug report. Invisible hands when holding a map. Look how long this has been a problem for all the way back to like 1.16 been reported many 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 times basically whenever you're holding a map you're you, you don't have a hand at all doesn't matter if it's a map doesn't matter if it's a treasure map doesn't matter if it's a woodland mansion map or an ocean explorer map basically you had no hands not quite sure why this is under the spectator mode changes but today it's finally been fixed so if we grab ourselves two maps we activate one you can see i have two hands on this map if we activate another one and we put one in the off hand and we're holding one. You can see the off hand now has a hand. You can see we have two hands, finally. I mean, I know it's not a big problem, but the fact that we've waited so long for them to fix this, just, it's about time, right? It's about time some of these long bugs were actually being fixed and squished. Changes with audio. They have fixed a bug that caused the new wild update music to not play in the wild update biomes. When in creative mode, moving on to blocks. Twisting vines and weeping vines with no support now pop when the random ticking speed is set to zero. We got a bug report. Going all the way back to the 1.16 versions again. Breaking twisting vines slash weeping vines from the middle doesn't pop off when the random tick speed is zero. So we do have a video here. You can see you just end up with floating things. So if I go to settings and we change our speed to zero... And then we break this. The top ones now actually break as well. That's the same for the weeping vines. Skulk Catalyst now blooms when a mob with no experience dies next to it. So we have a villager. We know they don't drop XP. We kill it. Keep an eye on the catalyst. It still does that so-called spreading animation. But there's no XP or the Skulk to spread. Obviously, when you kill the likes of a creeper or something like this, you'll see it spreads. But if it's a villager or any of the mob, you're the one who got away. Any of the mob that doesn't give XP, then nothing really happens. Hanging mangrove probaghouls. No longer drop a probaghoul item when silk touch, if not at max growth. Muddy mangrove roots now can now be placed sideways. This is a Java parity, so previously 
You could not on Bedrock Edition place these uh, sideways. You can once again do it. It's finally been fixed. So yeah, on Bedrock Edition, every single one of them was basically facing upwards like this. So that's what it would look like. Now you can di put them in some kind of directional. Hanging mangrove probagool no longer changes color when certain blocks are placed nearby. We've got a bug report. Mangrove probagool turns red when powered by redstone. Pretty unique one. There was actually a case where you could physically change the item color. This time it was red. It's been fixed. Moving on to gameplay. Fixed an issue that could occur when traveling through a nether portal to the overworld. On the bug report, it says delay occurs when exiting a portal from the nether to the overworld. This has been an issue since the last beta slash preview, so you won't be noticing this in full release. VR, unexpected. The toggle perspective hint now shows the player's assignment instead of the default assignment. Mangrove and azalea leaves. Mangrove and azalea leaves no longer prevent tree growth. We got a bug report. Mangrove leaves prevent saplings, azalea, and flowering azalea from growing up. It's a vanilla parity. Let's see if they fixed it. So for this, you'd need bone meal, you would need flowering azalea, and you'd need this. So if you had this on top and you tried to do this previously, the growth wouldn't go through the leaves. As you can clearly see, it's been fixed. Moving on to mob effects. Fixed an issue with extra health from health boost not persisting after exiting the world. We got a bug report. Extra health from health boost disappears after logging off. So this is what it looks like when you give yourself extra hearts. If you log off and log back in, they disappear. That's been fixed. Fixed an issue that caused FOV to stutter when sprinting while the player had the speed effect applied. So I don't know how long it's been since this has been in the game for, but if you have forward slash effect at P and we do speed, if you had speed, sometimes this is what would happen. It'd be like this, right? And you just couldn't, you just couldn't sprint, right? It would just, it would stutter, it would freeze, it, it, it would do this. It was so annoying. Been an issue for quite some time, actually. They finally fixed it. See a few people on my community tab ask me about this. Mobile controls added support for middle mouse click on iOS. So recently they added support for keyboard and mouse on iOS. I think it was like wireless or even plugged in. Anyway, middle mouse click is your pick block, which means you can instantly pick block using the middle scroll button on your mouse. So you can pick block every single block. I'm guessing it wasn't currently active for iOS controls and players. And as you can see, it just makes things a lot easier if you want to instantly grab things. So if you're on iOS and using keyboard and mouse, yep, it's been fixed. Moving on to mobs. Jobless zombie villagers are no longer unable to ride minecarts and boats. We got a bug report. Minecart or boat doesn't pick up zombie villagers. Been an issue for a little bit of time. There is a video here. Basically what happens is this is going to become a zombified villager. Come on, get inside of it and turn that off. They're going to activate, or we'll try and activate it with rails, but they just don't work with rails. So that's been fixed. Ravager is now able to destroy mangrove leaves, azalea leaves, azalea, cave vines, drip leaves, spore blossoms, and hanging roots. Skulk sensors, we have a lot of changes here. If two vibrations are emitted at the same time, Skulk sensors will now react to the closest one. So the best way for me to show you this one, we put this down. If I throw this and jump at the same time, it's going to react to this one rather than reacting to my jump. So we try this one more time. We get ready. Throw this, jump at the same time. All right, one more time because that was a bit delayed. So we do it and we jump. You can see here it reacts to the one that's closest rather than reacting to the furthest one or both. That time it picked me up first though. If two vibrations are emitted at the same time and at the same distance, Skulk sensors will now react to the one with the highest frequency. Skulk sensors now detect a creeper exploding with a frequency of 15. Skulk sensors now detect an end crystal exploding with a frequency of 15. Skulk sensors now detect a fish being let out of a bucket 
with a frequency of 12. Skook sensors now detect a TNT being fired out of a dispenser with a frequency of 12. Moving on to stability and performance. Fixed a crash that could occur when teleporting and killing an entity in the same tick. Entities that die completely now have their data removed from the world file. We got a bug report. Entity data does not get removed from the world save when entity dies. So entity storage dig p again active prefix. Been an issue since 1.18 and the 1.19 versions. Fixed potential crash when returning to the overworld from the nether or end. The game no longer crashes when entering coin starter bundle screen. User interface redesigned the toggle switches to make it easier to dis distinguish between the on and off states. Saddled pigs tooltip changed to ride instead of mount to match other rideable mobs. Trades fixed an issue that prevented fishermen villages from offering to buy boats at max level. And last but not least, technical updates. Let's read the change log. We actually have quite a few of these down to general commands, blocks, bucket item, dedicated server, graphics, stability, etc. If you're interested in the technical side of Minecraft, I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. We even have changes to experimental features. And there we have it, another week. Another beta slash preview is complete. More importantly, 1.19.10 is done, which means it is coming very, very soon. Hopefully side by side with Java 1.19.1. So yeah, today is my birthday. And if you made this far in today's video, you're the real MVP. Let me know in the comments section. Have a wonderful day. And I'm going to be live on twitch.tv forward slash Soldier. Come and say hi. Love you all. Goodbye. Thank you.